a very warm welcome in the class of mathematics 1 today our topic is cauchy's mean value theorem myself rupam pattachary assistant professor and department of mathematics gis college of engineering in this particular topic we need some pre idea on the same thing like the requirement for Lagrange's mean value theorem, Rolle's theorem, and they are we know the idea of function, the idea of continuity, the idea of differentiability. And along with this, we need also the idea of Rolle's theorem, which is already discussed to you, and Lagrange's mean value theorem. Because we are not only going to use all these things, we are also going to give some comparative idea for the Cauchy's mean value theorem along with Lagrange's mean value theorem. So let us proceed. Now the Cauchy's mean value theorem states us that if we have two functions f as well as g and both of them are defined from the closed interval a to b to R. So they are real valued function and their domain and ranges are like this. Both of them are satisfying the property that they are continuous and as well as they are differentiable in the range of a B open interval. But here we are having one more assumption that is g dash x that means the second function what we have taken that's differentiated state will be always not equal to 0 for all x in the open interval a to b. If these conditions are satisfied, then we will get a point x0 where obviously in the open interval a to b such that this particular expression holds good. What is that? fb minus fa by gb minus ga is equal to f dash x0 by g dash x0. So it is our Cauchy's mean value theorem. Now before going into the problems related to Cauchy's mean value theorem, we just want to show you that how it is linked or interconnected with the previous theorems what we have learned that is Rolle's theorem and Lagrange's mean value theorem. So this is our Lagrange's mean value theorem and Rolle's theorem. Now look at this. First of all, if I want to compare our Cauchy's mean value theorem with our Lagrange's mean value theorem, what we get in Cauchy's mean value theorem it is Fp minus F A by G B minus G A is equal to F dash C by G dash C. Here they have taken X0, we can take C. Ultimately, the C is the point within A and B. Now, 
if my function suppose gx is taken as x it is continuous and differentiable in the range a to b and we get g dash x is equal to 1 clear now you can think then if we take this as g dash x is equal to 1 and g x is equal to x if we apply it in Cauchy's mean value theorem what do we get f is not explicitly mentioned so it will be f b minus a p then g b will be b g a will be a as g x is equal to x is equal to f dash c by g dash c but g dash x equal to 1 so g dash c will be also 1 and what we get all of us now very much confident that we get the LMVT from CMVT where our assumption or additional information is GX is equal to X. So I think this conversion or interconnection is established properly. And as we know that LMVT and Rolls theorem is connected in the last class we have mentioned it we can also claim that cmvt and rolls theorem must be connected now if anyone wants to find out that uh, what will be the case for rolls theorem from cmvt we only require that the additional information that fb is equal to fa and if we can take it, we will get f dash c is equal to 0 in this particular conversion. So, if we take gx equal to x along with, if we take gx equal to x along with fb is equal to fa in cmvt, then it will give us the Rolle's theorem. So, I think this is the establishment of all their interrelationship. Now we are going to solve some problems related to CMVT first. After that, the application of MVT to prove some inequalities. So, first of all, if we take one problem like this, that is fx is equal to x square and 5x is equal to suppose x and then we have to find out the value of epsilon or xi in terms of a and b in Cauchy's mean value theorem in terms of a and b in Cauchy's mean value theorem so here we can see that it is very much clear that fx and phi x satisfies both continuity and differentiability criteria both are satisfied so by Cauchy's mean value theorem we can write it as f b minus f a by phi b minus phi a is equal to f dash psi by phi dash psi now as fx is equal to x square it is given so obviously it will be b square minus a square and phi x equal to x so it will be b minus a and in this part we get f dash psi means 2x so it will be 2 f psi and pi dash psi so pi dash x equal to 1 so it will be 1 so after simplifying this we can write it as psi is equal to 1 by 2 b plus a into b minus a by b minus a so obviously it will be b plus a or a plus b what you want to write so this is the requirement 
of this particular problem that I am shy in terms of A and B. Now proceeding further for another problem, we can use Cauchy's mean value theorem and we can just check what will be the case if fx is equal to e to the power x and gx is equal to e to the power minus x. So let us apply Cauchy's mean value theorem for this but before that we can say that both of them are satisfying both the conditions continuity and differentiability for the required interval. Okay. So what we can show that if we take the interval x and x plus h because as it is not given we are taking suppose this interval and we are checking this thing for this interval the Cauchy's mean value theorem. And obviously, we have to make h greater than 0, otherwise, this interval will not be constituted. So, we get f of x plus h minus fx by g of x plus h minus gx. Just we are copying this particular structure and we are trying to check what is going to happen x plus theta h divided by g dash x plus theta h now i want to emphasize something over here x plus theta h is greater than x and we have to make x plus theta h is less than x plus h because we need this particular point c within x and x plus h and we are identifying or denoting c by x plus theta h. So as x plus theta h is greater than x then theta must be greater than 0. And as x plus theta h is less than x plus h, then theta h is less than h, that is theta then theta must be less than 1. So what we get cumulatively, theta is having being greater than 0, less than 1. It is very easy but it is very important observation which will be required not only in this problem but also the coming problems. So here we have to mention that theta is lying between 0 to 1 and one more thing obviously g dash x is not equal to 0 as per the requirement of Cauchy's mean value theorem. Now the problem is very easy just we have to write the functional expressions of fx and gx which is given to us. And differentiating f and g we get I am requesting all the listeners that please do this problem by your own hand and uh, it will be better if you check the calculations after you have tried it make a pause over here have a try then it will be also very much useful for your own understanding and we can do after simplification here e to the power x e to the power h minus 1 by if i take it to the power minus x it will be e to the power minus h minus 1 and similarly after simplifying here to the power theta h by minus e to the power minus theta h and in the next
next line we can get basically e to the power h minus 1 by e to the power minus h minus 1 equal to the same thing you can just take this uh, in the upper part or you can take it in the next line also minus e power minus theta h and then we are getting So you can think that how it is, uh, this is nothing but merely some calculations you have to do e to the power minus h, you can just take common from here, then you will get 1 minus e to the power h and here you will get e to the power minus, there is minus 2 theta h and doing this ultimately as the constraint of the location where we are getting here we are getting theta is equal to 1 by 2 since h is greater than 0 obviously h is greater than 0 it is has to be mentioned over here so these are nothing but the calculational steps we can check that is theta is independent both of x and h and it is equal to half so the observations are important over here and the observations is also important is there theta is independent obviously over x and h. So Fauci's mean value theorem gives us this particular observation in this problem. Now as we have already stated that we are going to give some example where we will establish the inequality with the help of mean value theorem. So first of all one problem is something like that fx is equal to sin inverse x 0 less than a less than b less than 1 we can prove b minus a by root over 1 minus a square less than sine inverse b minus sine inverse a less than b minus a by root over 1 minus b square obviously when 0 is less than a less than b less than 1. So we have to prove it. Now look at this in this whole problem we are not getting any explicit direction or instruction for applying mean value theorem. But these types of problem can be beautifully tackled by mean value theorem. So let us see how the process is applied. So as sin inverse x is continuous and as well as differentiable in the interval, we are not mentioning it here. We can just using LMVT, we can write it as FB minus FA by b minus a is equal to f dash c where c is within obviously you have to mention it that where 0 is less than a from this 
less than c less than b because c has to be within a and b less than 1. Now using the function what we can write sin inverse b minus sin inverse a by b minus a is equal to 1 by root over 1 minus c square because it is the differentiation of sin inverse x 1 by root over 1 minus x square okay now the concept is if you compare in this intermediate step with the problem sin inverse b minus sin inverse a by b minus a is already achieved now we have to find out the inequality relationship and for this we have to use this inequality relationship so that we can reach to this desired one so what we can do we will start it from here now a is less than c less than b and we all know that a b c all are greater than zero from this condition so you can next in the next line we can write a square is less than c square is less than b square now we are using only computational technique the conceptual part is already applied from lmvt now in the next line we can write 1 minus a square is greater than 1 minus c square is greater than 1 minus b square for the inequality relationship then we can write root over 1 minus a square is greater than root over 1 minus c square is greater than root over 1 minus b square in the next line we are making the reciprocal of this one 1 by root over 1 minus a square is less than 1 by root over 1 minus c square is less than 1 by root over 1 minus b square i think starting from c we are trying to reach to one expression 1 by 1 minus c square so that instead of this we can apply this one so if i denote this one as my second expression and if i denote this one is my first expression then can i write it from 1 and 2 we get b minus a by root over 1 minus a square is less than sin inverse b minus sin inverse a because this b minus a is taken in this part so b minus a by 1 minus c square uh, b minus a by root over 1 minus c square instead we can write it as sin inverse b minus sin inverse a then less than b minus a by root over 1 minus b square which is our desired result obviously where 0 is less than a less than b less than 1. So this is the beauty of these types of problems where the application of mean value theorem is shown. In the similar manner there can be so many problems which can be solved by the uh, help of this particular problem. So let us uh, go for one more problem related to this pattern. <clears throat> The question asks us that show that x y 1 plus x is less than log of 1 plus x is less than x if x is greater than 0. So from this question you have to identify what function you have to take and after that what how you have to proceed using lmv so here we are assuming fx as log of 1 plus x you can uh, try to identify that why this is taken 
because 1 by 1 plus x is required but it is not only log of 1 plus x log of 1 plus x minus x by 1 plus x that means this whole function if it is taken here then what we get we have taken it as fx so here f0 is equal to 0 if you put 0 here log 1 is 0 and it is 0 by 1 plus 0 that is 0 and fx and f dash x after getting this one we can find out f dash x which is equal to 1 by 1 plus x and minus if i do this differentiation 1 plus x whole square then 1 into 1 plus x minus 1 plus x into uh, 1 plus x is uh, then it will be x into only 1 1 into x uh, so after simplifying what we can get it here as x by uh, it is minus x my plus x is cancelled out and we get it as after simplification x by 1 plus x whole square obviously which is greater than 0 if x is greater than 0 because the denominator part is a square term and x is greater than 0 means numerator is also positive so what you get hence if x is greater than 0 if x is greater than 0 and consequently what we get x by 1 plus x if fx is greater than 0 so you can take this x by 1 plus x in the right hand side direction and you can ultimately reverse it so x by 1 plus x is less than log of 1 plus x this is another technique actually i am going to show you So, in the desired inequality, one part is established. Now, if I can establish the other part, then combining them, then combining them, we can do it. Just a minute because there are some unwanted, yes. So, now the first part is done and we can keep it as one, equation number one and again uh, similarly I am going to take another function and I think now it is very much clear that what, what will be our function, it will be x minus log of 1 plus x so if we take or gx is equal to x minus log of 1 plus x in the similar manner we can get g0 uh, gx uh, equal to 0 uh, because it is 0 minus log 1 that is 0 g0 is equal to 0 and we get and our g dash x will be 1 minus 1 by 1 plus x 1 minus 1 by 1 plus x is nothing but if i 1 plus x minus 1 that is x by 1 plus x which is greater than 0 uh, for x greater than 0 and it is given that it is x greater than 0 we have to write it also here if x greater than 0 and it is given here so you can see that a very simple small line how much important it can be in the whole problem so if x greater than 0 we get it so what we ultimately claim so here we say we can claim that gx is greater than 0 if x is greater than 0 similarly as we have x is greater than 0 and consequently what we get similarly we can write it as uh, it implies x minus log of 1 plus x is greater than 0 which implies 
log of 1 plus x is less than x. So log of 1 plus x is less than x with the condition if x is greater than 0. So now you can take it as our equation number 2 and you can see that log of 1 plus x is uh, less than 1 x it is the second part of the required inequality. So combining them, combining them from 1 and 2, what we get? Our desired problem x by 1 plus x is less than log of 1 plus x is less than x. Obviously, you have to mention if x is greater than 0. So, this is the whole thing of our uh, problem and this is the approach through which we have to proceed. So, I think I had uh, exhibited the basic problems related to this uh, mean value theorems and finally I want to uh, mention that these are the uh, references what we have used to prepare this video lecture and uh, these are the assignments what you have to solve not only this but these are some of them to make the idea more strong. Thank you all. Happy listening. Happy learning.